Hey everyone, this is Kelly from Nice Lady Productions. Welcome to my in-depth review of the Red Raven camera. And really, I like to think of this more as a tutorial. And because it's a tutorial, this is part one of two. I really didn't want to make this review right away because I wanted to have the opportunity to really use the camera and really learn this DSMC2 camera system so that I could give that information to you. One of the things people discuss about the Red Raven camera is the width of the field of view of the camera. Red has some excellent tools online, including the crop factor tool that will show you that the Red Raven camera is very, very close to Super 35 as far as the sensor goes if you shoot at 4.5K full frame. Okay, let's jump into the design. The red DSMC2 brain is the smallest and lightest camera that red has ever produced. It's just 3.5 pounds for the brain. And then you can add whatever module. This is the DSMC2 module, which gives me HDMI, SDI, mic jack, headphone jack, gen lock, power and then the ability to mount a v-mount battery to the back unlike their other cameras that have an interchangeable mount the red raven comes with a canon ef mount when you take a, a an old lens like this pentex m42 screw mount lens that i think i paid 20 bucks for it creates some really cool buttery smooth sharp footage the small size of the camera makes it very easy to use as a handheld camera that you can take around anywhere and really the idea is you can make it as small as you want or build it up as big as you want, depending on your shooting style. I've shot on hot days, 12 hour days in freezing weather, and I've never had any issues. Let's talk about fan noise. I always use adaptive preview and quiet record, which means that the camera will use the fan and really keep the camera cool. And then when you hit record, it goes quiet. And as a matter of fact, I was shooting a documentary where I had the Red Raven and we were shooting it alongside a Red Epic and a Scarlet from the previous generation of cameras. And the fan noise was just not even perceptible compared to the other cameras. The new DSMC2 cameras have a cableless design. So the monitor and any of the attachments like the EVF can be attached without any cables, which is really, really nice. The 4.7 inch monitor is much nicer than their previous five inch monitor, but it is still 720p. The seven inch monitor that they sell is 1080. I would personally rather have a little higher res because I find that I'm always punching in when I'm double checking that things are in focus. In their latest firmware release, they have added their logo to the startup menu so that you see that when you hit the power, which is helpful, but they're not gonna win any words for startup time. It takes about 24 seconds, but then you're ready to shoot. Okay, let's talk about accessories. I personally really like the accessories that Red makes. Even their top handle is very comfortable and compact. If you wanna hold the camera from the side, Red makes a really nice side handle that gives you full menu control. The Sigma 18-35 lens is an excellent lens for this camera. The only thing I don't like about that lens is it's not parfocal. So as you zoom in or zoom out, you'll find that your footage isn't as sharp as when you first set it. You can see here I'm using the small rig top and side plates. Wooden camera also makes gear for the red camera systems as do a few other manufacturers. I like the small rig stuff because it's rather inexpensive and it's well made. I think that having a base plate protects the bottom of your camera. It gives you mounting points for 15 millimeter rods, follow focus, etc. And it just makes the most sense. You can see here I have an old Scudo handle mounted to the side of it because, you know, I like to think outside the box and come up with uh, new um, ways to hold the camera. I would have possibly went with the red version of their EVF because I like that it's cableless. But the Zacuto Gradical Eye is small. It has amazing features. And I like that I could use it with any SDI cameras. The Hypercore batteries on the back here, they're nice and light and shallow, which is why I like them. The downside is where they have the DTAP port coming out the side is also where the SDI comes 
out for the camera. So you can't use DTAP from the battery, but you can use DTAP from the top of the camera. The matte box I go with for this camera is the Misfit Atom, although Bright Tangerine's other matte boxes also work great. I just like how lightweight it is and small. I've also since added a small rig sun hood to the monitor for shooting outdoors, which is an excellent cheap accessory. So the Red Raven has built in wireless in the camera, so you can connect it to your mobile phone and Probably the best accessory for this camera is the full control app. There's two versions of it. There's the light version that basically can just like power on your camera and you can see some of the settings. And the full version gives you full control over all your settings. If you're at any point away from your camera, like you have it on a crane or it's on a gimbal or it's on a steady cam, this is the perfect app for you. So I can change the white balance settings as you can see that I'm viewing on the monitor here. I can change the frame rate. I can hit record and you see that record button in my ICANN monitor. When I'm done recording, I can go back and use the app to review the files and skim through them just like I would on the monitor. But as you can see, my camera is mounted on a crane in front of me. Okay, let's talk about exposure and ISO. I was able to go to Reducation years ago in Hollywood and learn from RED about their camera system and it really, really helped me um, just kind of understand the whole premise behind it. And one of the things was that the ISO that you're shooting with really doesn't make that big of a difference. The camera is recording at a native ISO of say 800. And so when you're changing your ISO, you're changing the look that you're looking at, but you're not necessarily changing the raw signal. And I'm going to show you what I mean now. So cameras and monitors usually come with a overlay setting called false color, and it shows you the parts of the image that are exposed properly under or overexposed. The red monitor has two of these settings. One is called exposure and one is called video, and they're very different. The exposure overlay setting shows you the exposure of the raw sensor. To illustrate the point that ISO doesn't really impact what the camera is seeing, because of course you can change the ISO in post, when I click on my raw signal to see what the camera is recording when not in Dragon Color, and I go to change my ISO, you can see with the exposure overlay tool that there's nothing changing on the image. So how I use it is I use the exposure overlay and I actually check to see what that camera is recording. And then I will go in and I will look at the video overlay false color just to see like if my skin tones are how I want them or I'm exposed in certain areas of the image properly. If you're in a situation where you need to change the exposure of your image using the red camera, change your aperture or add or remove light in your shot. Flip it into video false color mode. You immediately see when you change the ISO, it changes the exposure of the image. It makes perfect sense because that ISO change that you could also do in post is changing how the camera is viewing what it captured with the sensor. So it's basically the look. So if anything, these two tools exposure and video simplify things. What you're really trying to do when you're exposing your image is just make sure you're not clipping your highs and make sure you're not underexposing your dark areas that you will want to pull up in post because that's when you're gonna start introducing grain. RED has built so many nice tools into this camera and monitor for focusing as well as exposing the image properly, whether it's using the stop lights on the right-hand side of the histogram and the grain meter on the left, or using the exposure. You can program any of the eight soft keys along either side of the monitor or the hard keys on the physical camera to pull up raw, to pull up frame guides, to pull up auto white balance, to pull up anything that you wanna use really quickly. Once you read the manual and you get familiar with all the tools, you'll really see that the RED camera system is very robust, very professional, and really well thought out.
So low light is really where I see a lot of people go wrong with red cameras and cameras in general. I was shooting a documentary and I was more of a fly on the wall and I didn't want to interrupt anything that was going on, but I wanted to shoot this shot where the rancher has a little black lamb in his hands. I opened it wide open to 1.8 and I shot the scene knowing that I wasn't going to be getting enough light on the lamb. But here you can see when I pull up that ISO and post, I still have a great image, but there is a little bit of grain in the blacks. Now let's juxtapose that with a shoot later that evening where I was told that we would be filming in the pitch black. I knew that this camera wouldn't be able to capture a pitch black scene. And so I added an LED off to the right of my camera to mimic moonlight. And then I gave the actors LEDs to shine around. But as you can see, the blacks in this image are really nice and clean. So that's my tip about low light. Give the camera some light. Don't overexpose your highs and pull that down and post. Above all else, you're not really going to find any other cameras in the market in this price range that offer the high speed shooting capabilities. And it's nice having the lower quality, higher speed options, but really I love the 120 frames per second at full 4.5K. And as if you needed another reason to own a matte box, what about the snow? Sometimes it even snows on the west coast of Canada. Okay, I'm gonna wrap up part one of the Red Raven review here. In part two, we're gonna talk about HDRX, we're gonna talk about audio time-lapse, we're gonna look at the focus features, and most importantly, we're gonna talk about the picture settings of this camera so that you can really get a sense of what you're working with when you use the Red Raven. Please join me for part two and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.